Hey kids, happy Easter. I'm so excited that it's Easter today. Even though we're not here at church together, I hope that you're having a fabulous time celebrating Easter at home because there is no better day to celebrate. Jesus is alive and we can have a relationship with him. So it's just super exciting. Um, as you can see, I'm here back at the church. Um, just a few of us came in today to get to spend some time with you. So if you were here, I would be asking you some questions today. How are you guys doing? I wish I could hear all your answers. I wish I could see all your faces, but I really do have some questions for you. So what has been, let's just say the best part of the last few weeks? What's different that you've really been enjoying and that's really been the best part? I know it seems strange to ask that question because there's you know so many things that are hard, but I just wanted you to take a minute and maybe share with somebody that you're with right now. What's been good? What's been one of the good things that's happened in the last couple weeks? I know for me, I've been able to sleep in more often. That's pretty cool, I like that. So what's been scary? Has anything been scary? Anything that you've been kind of holding inside even that you've been concerned about? Maybe you could tell somebody at your house. What's been kind of scary to you? I know for me, sometimes I think, is this ever going to end? Are we going to get to be together again? And that feels kind of scary to me. Um, what's been hard? Like really hard when you think about it. Maybe tell your parents or somebody else, your siblings, your brother, sister. What's been kind of hard? Let's think about that for a minute. So I know one thing that's been hard for me is I don't get to come to work every day and see my friends and spend time with them and talk to them and laugh with them. That's really hard because I really miss them. So anyway, I just want to encourage you guys to keep talking to your families and sharing about how you're feeling and what's going on and talk to God about it. That's one thing that I've been trying to do even more and more is I just sit down and I tell God these things. I tell him what I'm happy about and what I'm thankful for. I tell him what scares me and what my concerns are. And I tell him what's hard and what I'm struggling with. And then he helps me. He helps give me peace in knowing that he is with me no matter what I'm feeling and where I'm at. And I just want to encourage you that he's with you too. And that's one of the amazing things about Easter, right? He is risen. Now, if you were here with me, you would say back, he has risen indeed. So I'll say it again, and then you say it at home, okay? He has risen. I can almost hear you. He has risen indeed. All right, guys. Well, today uh, we have our Easter lesson with teacher Chuck. Super excited to have Chuck here with us today. So let's dive right in. And I want to remind you of something I was thinking about this morning. Sometimes we say we're going to have our Bible story and um, and that's good. And but I want to remind you that our Bible stories are true. They're real. These aren't stories that somebody thought up in their imagination and wrote down. These are true stories. And that's why I like to say it's our Bible lesson. So anyway, I love you guys and happy Easter. Hey kids, happy Easter. Teacher Chuck here. I don't know, do you guys do any of the Easter egg stuff at your house? Did you know that scientists recently discovered that rabbits do not lay eggs. They have discovered that the source of Easter eggs is chickens. In fact, Chuck the Easter chick. Here comes Chuck the Easter chick, laying colored eggs so quick. Clickety clockety Easter's on its way. Bye. 
Well, enough for the silly stuff. Let's get to the serious stuff, okay? The stuff that's really, really true. We're going to be in the part of the Bible today that some of you, if you were on the website about the Easter egg extravaganza and tried it, that's exactly where we're going to be, back at the part where Jesus had a, a supper with his disciples, and then afterwards he went out in the garden and was praying. And while he was praying, got grabbed by the soldiers and taken downtown, and, and the king puts him out in front supposed to do with this guy and they yell crucify him crucify him and you just kind of let him do it so they took him out and they stuck him up on the cross and he stayed there and stayed there and the rule was you stay there until you're dead and he did and after he was done dying then friends came and got his body and took it over to a, a cave grave, a place dug out of the hill, and they stuck him in there and then rolled a great big stone over the, the um, front of it. And that was Friday afternoon, and then it's Saturday, and Saturday night, and Sunday, Sunday morning. Some morning, a couple of ladies came. I think there's a picture of them in the extravaganza. And they went there to the grave, and when they got there, there was an angel sitting on the, the stone that was there, and he said, Hey, I'll bet you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. He's alive. Go tell his disciples. And they start to go off and do it, and wham, they run right into Jesus. And they fell down and worshiped at his feet. Wow, what an Easter basket surprise that was. But some people, maybe you kids wonder this too, what was really going on there in that grave? What was this thing about how could God be dead? Well, so, well, let's just do this. So you get this grave cave, and they always wrap them up in, in um, cloth stuff, really tight, and so they're all covered up like that. And do you suppose that when Jesus was dead, laying there in that grave cave, do you think he wiggled his hands free and started doing? stuff with his hands? Or do you think he was really, really, yep, the Bible says he was really, really dead. So nothing was happening. It was just this body there. Friday, day one, day two, Saturday, early Sunday morning, nothing. But how did he know when it was Easter that he was supposed to come back to life? I mean, it was <laughs> that's in that Bible that's down there. He had actually told a bunch of people when, before he got killed, he said, I'm going to get killed, and three days later I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm going to come back to life. So he knew how long to stay dead. But what would have happened if it came to day three when it was time for him to be undeaded and to come back to life and he's there dead and it's time to be alive and nothing happens. And it's time to be alive and there's no nothing. Maybe he should make some noises. Maybe he should go. <sighs> Do you think that's what Jesus did when it came time to be alive? Is, who's stronger, death or Jesus? Is it going to be any problem for him to just get undead and come alive? Not at all. If he's the Lord of the living, all he had to do was just kind of like wake up from sleep. 
and get up and there he was. And it was just like that. Now that was for him. Now let's talk about us. The Bible says that we were dead. And if that's true, what killed us? How did we dead? Did we get stuck up on a cross? I don't think so, Tim. The Bible says that the thing that killed us was sin. Sin made us dead as a doornail. And so, just like Jesus, we're all like in a, a cave grave, just like he was, except, how long am I going to stay here? Hmm. When I decide it's time for me to come to life, can I, uh, can I just open my eyes and do it? That's the special thing about God, the all-powerful God. He can do that, but me, I'm stuck in these grave clothes, and no matter what I do, I can't get out. And there's no hope. And I'm stuck in this helpless. And then, and then I hear this voice on the other side of the grave cave, and it says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Wow. So God can not only make himself alive, he can take a, a grave close dead person and make them come to life. And how? Well, do you remember that thief on the cross they talked about? He just called out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Or, or those blind men that Jay talked about last week, the ones that said, Lord, son of David, help us. Or even Peter, he's slipping down below the water and he yells, Lord, Lord, save me. And they believed that it would happen. And just like that, you and I, even though we're bound up in these grave clothes, can yell, Jesus, save me. And we know he will. And just like that, the clothes are off. And we share in that brand new life with Jesus. So... Rhonda always talks about sometime during the day just getting with God, just you and God. And when you do that today, there are lots of things you could do. But if you can't think of anything, maybe you could ask, God, am I alive with you or, or am I still dead in these grave clothes and helpless? And that would be a good thing to square with God. To say, wow, I don't know. Jesus, save me. I believe you can. Or if you know that you're already alive, just rejoicing that there's nothing. There's not death. There's not, I don't know about you guys, but I got all these yucky things in my life, even though I love Jesus, and sometimes I feel like I'm all tied up in him, and not even Jesus is strong enough. And I just need to, to talk to him about it and say, Lord Jesus, there's stuff that seems more powerful than you, and I know it isn't. And I want you to keep working on that. All right. Thanks, kids. Happy Easter. He is alive, and now I am too.